Okay. Call to order the Urban Renewal Agency meeting, A6, 24, order 7831. Uh, again, uh, excuse absences from Jeanette Santiago and Councillor LaFrenz. So we're looking for an agenda to approve tonight's urban renewal agenda. I'll go ahead and make a most motion to approve tonight's agenda as written. Holmes makes a motion to approve tonight's agenda. Any seconds? I'll second. Councilor Bailey, any discussion? All those in favor, say by saying aye. 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 Opposed? It carries. Um, all right, back to public comment again, place. Do we have any, Susan? We invited to speak council regarding any matter not on agenda, not scheduled for public hearing. Members of public addressing are requested to give their name and city residence. Please not to repeat your questions to allow for more speakers. Limit yourself to five minutes as we are limited to 30 minutes total for public comments. Like to speak, Chief Pritcher. Well, the only item we're going to speak on the agenda is 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 the urban renew uh, the reservoir, and whether we're bringing it in. So, if you have other questions, just specific urban renewal comments, we will we will take those. We're not going to um, go into depth on anything else during the agenda item. You can, but not in this public comment period. OK, thank you. Um, we do have approval of minutes um, on the consent agenda. April 15, 2024, Urban Renewal Agency meeting minutes. Motion to approve. So moved. Uh, Councilor Jacobs, any seconds? Second again. Second by Councilor Bailey. All those in any discussion? All those in favor, state by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. The old business. We're looking at urban renewal res resolution 1 2024. Interim city manager Larry Lehman and public works director Dave Sukow like to make a presentation. Uh, yes, uh, I asked Dave to be here to discuss the, if you had any question on the reservoir, how that's financed, and so forth. Uh, basically, we're back here again from the last meeting. Uh, really, nothing has really changed. Uh, what we're asking you to do then is to approve the annexation. Of the, the Keys Reservoir property into the urban growth boundary, the urban renewal. And also, then, when you do that, we're asking you to allocate uh, up to 21% of the cost of the reservoir, uh, which we estimate to be about 2.1 million that uh, we would include in the budget. Probably, when we, when we ask that, we'll not all be in this year's budget. We we'll do what we can this year, next year, and probably take off. To finish that up in fiscal year 25 26. Because uh, we, we do want to continue the program you have now to help uh, the grant program and so forth. So, by doing over three fiscal years, right now we have a little over a million dollars in this fiscal year, in the current fiscal year that we can allocate towards that. And, and after July, we'd have the next fiscal year, and anything left remainder would come out of 25 26. That's what we're asking you to do. So the resolution doesn't specify a certain amount of time. It's we'll pay it off until it's paid off or until the 21% is paid off. We don't know our receipts until we get them each year. Um, and we have been approved for some, some loans that we can use should we need that. However, if we can, if we, it's going to take time to build it. So if we make a payment in 25, 26, meaning July of 25, we can probably cover the urban renewal portion of it. You still have to take out a loan and you have to explain where you're getting your payments from. Yeah. And first year and a half, you're just using cash right out of our account that we're receiving. So it won't be on the loan. That is correct. We use what we can. Yeah. And then part of the loan will be paid off. Put some money in, in the water fund we'll be using. we we'll use that, uh, that. The renewal funds first. That in there, and uh, then we will. We have to bottle, we will, and then pay that back. With this approval, this pledges 
this money towards that. that money. Um, Dave, I, questions I have for you. Uh, is there any water, um, looking through our urban renewal plan, we had identified some water jobs, things that we were gonna use it for. Have any of those been completed through ARPA funds or other funds that won't be needing urban renewal now? That's correct. So in the current urban renewal plan, as former city manager Sykes mentioned, there was no crystal ball at the time that the plan was drafted. So they used the data that they had in the 97 plan. At the last urban renewal meeting, there was an express um, interest from you guys for more information and more time to learn. Uh, when I drafted this plan, I tried to give you a little more of that context dating back to how things were generated the way they were. And yes, there were two wells that were identified in that plan that are both being funded right now through ARPA. Um, as well as half of this project, the reservoir is being funded through ARPA. Um, just with the budget shortfalls, we're trying to figure out the strategy to pay the remaining balance to keep this project on par. We obviously don't want to let this opportunity slip. This is a huge opportunity for this community, and we need to do what we can to keep it moving forward. So yes, projects identified on the plan are being funded in another way. And once again, at the time that the plan was drafted, nobody knew what that was going to look like, or we'd be even seeing this money I mean, from the, the federals. Um, so. so that's basically why the it, reservoir wasn't put in in the first place is prioritize. You probably had those first. Even think about the Keys Water Reservoir. Yeah, they were working off of the, the projects that they knew. We knew that the wastewater treatment plant was imminent. We knew we needed water sources. That was imminent. Nobody saw that this opportunity was on the horizon um, when it is. And now that it is, we definitely want to keep this moving forward. Um, using this money for the next few years, is that going to be a problem for other projects through wastewater treatment? I mean, you have, if we do, you have to go out and get loans for those. Yeah, it, the wastewater is based primarily on loan, um, and that loan has already been secured. They've assured us it was originally secured at $6.4 million. The phasing, the design has changed. Now we're facing $13 million. Um, so that's another discussion that we're going to be having about upping that. Um, we've already talked with the state revolving fund people. They have plenty of money. They said it's not a problem, but yes, there will be loan amendments that we will be talking about soon. We're out to bid right now for that project. So we're going to have hard numbers within a month and then we'll be able to come up with a financial plan and, and lock in that strategy, how that's going to be paid. Thanks, but could, uh, the plan does limit the total maximum uh, number of products. Uh, uh, the value of projects you can do, and that's like thirty-seven million dollars. This, this is part of that. Mm -hmm. Still got that top limit. Do we be, use that microphone earlier? We still. Have, I think someone's online. I'm sorry. So you got uh, you got that thirty-seven million uh, limit. Now that can be increased, but only that that is a major amendment. That's not you go back through the whole process again. Uh, well, this is a minor one. Uh, I would recommend, and I won't be here to do this, so. Uh, but I'd recommend after this is done, that as you start working on the sewer uh, projects out there and so forth, you look at the issuing some urban renewal bonds. Uh, and then, then you put those, get 10 year urban renewal bonds and then, uh, and then pay them off with future urban renewal dollars. And to do that would help avoid or at least uh, lower the amount of uh, sewer rates and so forth you're going to have to use. Uh, you can you borrow from the urban renewal agency just like you would if you issue city bonds and so forth but does not take voter approval. That different than getting a loan and using your urban renewal receipts every year to pay the loan? If probably if you dedicate that to that, you may get away with that. It's basically, you're right, it'd be the same thing. Uh, if the lending source, such as Dave's talking about, would accept that pledge, then it's probably the same. Councilor Holmes? Um, so I, I do appreciate the creative thinking on how we get these projects done because I agree this is a good opportunity for the community. We need to figure out how to make it work. Um, I, looking at the urban renewal plan, I do agree that public uh, that the water facility would be within scope of the original intent of the URA. So I don't I don't have an issue with bringing that in, but I do have an issue with creating putting putting the financing plan into place. That's really going to lock us in. Um, to our current urban renewal model. And I don't know if the chief will be able to come up and speak to it, but as I understood from the information shared, we may have a design flaw in our urban renewal structure. We have a lot of 
unimproved industrial land. And as that land gets improved, that's where the big unpredictability is going to come for everybody um, who's drawing on dollars. And that's what we saw with the Cascade Tissue property. And that's what has put us into compression. So I do think that's an issue that we need to look at and address. Um, I don't think that's an issue we need to look at and address now. I think we need to wait for a new city manager to come in. Um, I think we need to see what might be on the horizon in terms of some relief for local governments, um, because there could be some state solutions. So I think within two years, and we don't have a property that's eminently being developed, right? So I don't think we're at risk of having another big property come onto the tax rolls that, that are going to do what Cascade Tissue did. So I think we have a little time to think through what our options are. Um, so I would not feel comfortable though committing the urban renewal dollars beyond say a two-year period. And I do have concern too that we might not have the same amount of money coming in that we did previously because Cascade Tissue has removed equipment, right? right? So we're going to have that, that fund is going to be slower to be replenished and could take longer than we're initially projecting to pay off, which means we could be locking ourselves into a system we can't change for say four or five years. And that's a longer horizon than I would be comfortable with looking at the design issues that we may have. I, I agree with everything you're saying. We did look at that it, uh, with, by taking out the equipment and so forth, uh, the amount of money coming into the urban renewal district is gonna decrease substantially. Looking at that amount and so forth, we still think that we can, this can be paid off in fiscal year 25, 26. Even with the decrease, right? Of right. Federal. Okay. Mainly, and they were so fortunate there because we have that million dollars this year that can be put towards that. That's the big help. Mm -hmm. And so, the next two fiscal years, we can cover the balance. Yes, sir. Yes, Larry. When you say that you think we can pay it off in twenty, you said twenty-five, twenty-six fiscal year. We can. We can. Okay. What are what's attributing to that, and what are you considering attributing to that in full? Uh, the fact that we have uh, have over a million right now, we, we're going to end up the fiscal year right at almost 1.3 million, not quite 1.2. Uh, then next fiscal year, we don't know for sure yet, and and no one will. I mean, until we get to see that, but probably we'll be getting uh, probably about a half a million uh, with the reduction. Uh, we won't, and again, no one knows that until November. Uh, but that uh, we had estimated uh, 800,000. Uh, now that they've taken that off, that's going to be lowered and so forth. So now uh, we figure right about half a million dollars coming in, with, and that would be including some interest earnings and so forth. So lower the, that to about a half million, that brings us up to uh, 1.7 uh, roughly. and. Uh, so the fiscal year 25, 26, we could, we could cover that. It should grow without any new buildings at least 3% per year. Correct. Um, been doing a lot of study, a lot of reading on the urban renewal the last month or so, and really it just four questions kind of come up. So I do think, I'm talking about what Councillor Holmes said, I would like to focus on the reservoir and doing that, and then and then propose that maybe July, August, how the meetings, we, we get Andrea from the county, we really maybe do a deep dive on the urban renewal and our specifics, since none of us were on it when we approved it, learn because it does sound like industrial property comes in at the same price as, as RMV, RMV and, and, and assessed are the same. And so each time that happens, yes, it's a big windfall of tax money, but that compression grows because of the max, the, the limit. And so I like to learn more about that and see. Um, it, it is inevitable, it's gonna happen, but maybe there's way, things we can do um, because you can see in tax, with Cascade Tissues taking all their equipment out, that's gonna lower our tax revenues this year by 400,000 roughly. Like Larry said, it cuts in half. That might bring us out of compression for the year. I mean, because it's it's one whole. It's we had talked about taking cascades out. Well, half of it is coming out. You know, the all the equipment, which was about a forty million dollar value, but so that alone is changing the URA this year. So we'll have to learn more. But I think the water is what this was designed for. Um, 
it's all within scope, bringing it in within the urban renewal boundary. The amount of years it will take, I think your my numbers are pretty close, 1.3 and then half a million, half a million, get that 2.1 in the next budget cycle. Yeah. I would encourage you to hold off on the discussion uh, with uh, the county and so forth until the tax statements come out, until she has the figures. So are you going to have compression next year or not? I don't think anyone knows. And I, I, would, I think it's a good discussion to have, but I would encourage you to hold off until she can give you those figures at that point. Yeah, we've asked her a bunch. She really can't figure out what it's going to be. She has no idea. She's got people looking into it. It's really hard to guesstimate. What but um, we don't have anything else on the horizon being built right now. The food pods, I think, are in the urban renewal. That's commercial, so that's now going to help. Um, we hear from Chief Pritchard. Chief Pritchard, if you'd like to make a comment. It's aren't upside down. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Council, opportunity to speak. Uh, just a couple points. Um, we appreciate the opportunity to work with City Council on uh, some of our challenges with this particular project. Uh, having uh, or being a part of future discussions with city staff, I think with how this water tank project is going now, we have a couple concerns that we'd like you to take under consideration, and they mostly have to do with process. Generally speaking, look at the ORS when it talks about adding projects to an urban renewal district. You have to add the area in first, and then you add the project. And the way the resolution is written tonight, you're doing both at the same time, which is kind of messy. So you might want to consider splitting that up so that you're saying we're doing a land diagram first, and then we're going to add the, the, the project. Generally, that's, that's how it's supposed to go. Uh, with the, the speed at which this is going, while we understand it's important uh, to, to jump on these dollars uh, when they become available, I think because we're rushing, we're not actually looking at what urban renewal really is supposed to do with regard to how we're bringing in additional property. And one of the things uh, we want to identify is the strip that's going, this cherry stem addition, is so narrow that you can't really do anything else. And if Part of urban renewal is supposed to be about blight, it's supposed to be about improving services and access to this urban renewal area. Why aren't sidewalks being included in this? Because there are sections of sidewalks around the city property, and then there's gaps as you get down um, you know, towards where the, uh, um, the middle school is. So, I mean, if we're really looking at what we're supposed to do with urban renewal, why hasn't those things been considered or at least brought to the council? And we're concerned about process and, and the speed at which this is going. Um, and, and again, we appreciate the opportunity to continue the conversation on the compression issue because in our belief, that should be taken care of before anything else gets taken care of. We've been talking about this for a long time and technically that was teed up um, not too long ago and then sort of pushed on the, the side. So thank you for your time. <clears throat> Can I ask you a question? In, in regards to the process concern, what would you expect to change if we did it in two parts versus like we're doing tonight, which is doing it in one? Uh, basically, you are identifying a property change or boundary change first, and then you are bringing a project in second. I understand that being the process piece, but what do you expect to change if we were to break it up? Because would be the way the, the ORS of... reads, you can't do a project before it's actually in the property. And throughout this whole entire discussion, you're talking about a project before the property's ever been brought into the urban renewal district. So I think for the council, in order to make this clean, <clears throat> really should take in the pro you know, change the boundary first and then bring the project in because the way it looks, you guys are green lighting a project before you've even brought it into the urban renewal. I um I've kind of asked that myself um of the process on that. Um and Dave, um 
I'm just trying to think if there's any in you know Larry on resolutions if there's any adjustments that need to be made um, having two resolutions is there any benefit you know having resolution one bringing it into the into the boundaries then resolution two pay the estimated 2.1 million towards a new reservoir so that way if a change ever has to be made to the resolution or an adapt you know change uh, an addition you're just you're not messing with the resolution that brought the territory in you're just talking about the funding i don't know if that helps or makes any difference at all we thought it'd be cleaner and clearer if we brought them in together so you know exactly what's happening I can see us bringing it in and someone come by later saying, well, oh, you just brought it in so you can do this or that. This way it's very clear of what you're doing. Uh, if you want to change your resolution, I don't know why you'd ever, want, you'd ever change the resolution because it's very, you're bringing in one piece of property and then it's one project. I can't imagine changing that. Uh, I just think it's clear to get it done and uh, put it in one. Does it hold up anything on your side if we do break it apart, like Chief Pritchard pointed out? I don't know what good it does. What 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 good could that accomplish? Except delay the process. I think he explained that it's based on the ORS describes that it being a two part process. Okay, and, and he can talk to our attorney, and uh, we're okay. We we have done this. We ran it by them. As far as the process goes. Uh, we want to get. We want to be able to commit these funds so we can, can borrow the dollars, commit these to, to pay back the dollars, and get the project underway. Yeah, I mean, I, I thank you. I mean, I, I, I listen to Chief Pritcher, and if if our attorneys have looked at it and says we're say we're good, then I'm okay with um, passing that resolution. I mean, the only thing I would have done differently is is breaking them up and voted for them both tonight. Yeah. But, I, we haven't put that into our agenda, so because we did, we did pass this back uh, through our consultant uh, on land use. Uh, I mean, and I did a renewal uh, before we brought it to you, and uh, we wrote it up. She rewrote it, so forth, uh, and then put it in this form. This again is our first resolution of us using the funds for anything. Right, I understand. Grant program. So this is our first one. Um, I just want to make sure. Anybody else? Any other comments or? <clears throat> the other thing too is one question we had talking about compression we looking at it it looked like you know it's around that eleven thousand just based on compression is your concern too is that every year if something else comes in can compress it more and more so it's hard yes you understand urban renewal you're capped at a certain amount and you figure out your budgets based on that but if each year you're actually going to get less instead of the same amount it's hard to make a budget a compression. So, if another building goes in, it, could that mean another eleven thousand dollars off of your the bill? It would. It would depend on the size and scope of right. the project. It was equal. The, the challenge with the fire district here, and, and I want to make sure we do separate these out: the water versus the compression. But on the yeah. compression side, the challenge for the fire district. People keep talking about this eleven thousand dollars as as if it's a small number. Reality is we get no tax revenue from that property. The property was protected by um, uh, not urban renewal. It was protected by enterprise zone requirements. And as soon as those left, which we got no tax revenue. Neither did we. Right. But as soon as that left, then all of a sudden, all the tax revenue went to the city. And that's and one that, purpose of urban renewal is hopefully maybe they're bringing it in because of the program. What's happening is the largest property in the district isn't paying for the fire services. That's it's nothing. And you know, when we talk about equipment, we have to replace two heart monitors right now. Well, they're about fifty thousand dollars a piece. And I do. I do know it even states in our meetings and that they did give money to the fire department just because they knew they were going to be taking money away during the urban renewal program. So they did specifically say $200,000 because of that. Again, I want to make sure you're careful on that because those dollars were from the same program that you guys are using for the water tank. And you cannot say that those dollars were because of, of a tax limitation or a tax sheltering process for a building. 
those funds that were used to purchase the ambulance were because the ambulance was, in essence, damaged during the COVID time. So those COVID dollars is what was funding the ambulance. Which was given by the city. Yes. We got the funds and then we gifted that money to you. Yes. Yes. I'm just, you can't say yeah. it's because of Cascade Tissue. No. Yeah. no. No, but because we knew we were going to be taking some urban renewal dollars on future businesses, um, they allocated that. And they may have other reasons, too. They've looked at a lot of things and voted sure. about a lot of money to a lot of departments before our time. That was one that in the minutes they, they did state because of urban renewal. So mm -hmm. I believe that we're trying to help and understand what this does to special. Yes, Councilor. Um, might I just make, I guess, one alternative scenario for the council to entertain or the agency to entertain um, instead of funding the full 21 percent, because I still do have concern that we may be locking ourselves into this structure for longer than two, two and a half fiscal cycles. Um, so I would feel comfortable bringing it in, awarding the current funds that are in there, the 1.2. Um, and then that still gives us the freedom to look at this and make some modifications if needed. I would maybe propose an amendment to the resolution that we fund 12% the urban renewal funds for yeah. some flexibility. Yeah, Dave. Um, just to stay on, on topic here a little bit. So um, when you read through the city's website on urban renewal, there's great information on there. I assume all of you have done that. But it, it this project is the epitome of what that mm -hmm. talks about. This particular reservoir serves 100% of this city currently. It's not exclusive to anywhere. It serves the urban renewal district 100% of which is 21% of the city. The applicability of the 21% is there. And it's ironic to get pushback from our biggest water user, fire department, for a project that serves their purposes to a T. I'm, I'm really confused as to why we're getting off topic. And I'm fearful that it's because of the compression, it's misguided frustrations here. This, my, this project has a purpose. This plan has a purpose. It's a funding me mechanism for this. And this is, to me, a, a clear cut and dry deal. I'm not sure where we're buried. No. If, if for some reason $2.1 million isn't there, we're going to adjust. We're going to borrow. We're going to do what we need to. This is just asking that you make it the 21% applicability. We don't even know it is $10 million yet. Until the numbers come in, this is an engineer's estimate. It could be 12. It could be 8. We don't know. So all we're asking for is, is the committal to the 21% ultimately, which we're estimating at 2.1 just for clarity. I do appreciate that, Dave. And I do apologize trying to, I do, I see it as two different things and I really do want to stay on topic now with the reservoir. And if we don't, the problem is if, if, it, if it does take three or four years to pay, it still needs to be paid, it still needs to be taken care of. And urban renewal is that money that is designed for that. Yes, it would be nice if it was in two years, but if if the, the receipts that come in are less, it, it's not going to hold up another project waste. I mean, if we go get a loan, you're going to have to pay for it with something. Correct. So it would be increase if you do 12%, it could be increased water. Yeah. And that's that's fine. I I guess this agency just needs to be confirming then that we're making a choice that we are locked into the current design of the system, which is creating problems potentially for other agencies in our area so we will not be making any changes substantive changes to the area that is currently in our ura until this is paid off just yeah. one other thing a point of clarity is the maximum indebtedness is set at 37 million you're going to spend 37 million over the duration without a major amendment i don't think any changes we're not asking for that to change yeah. the, the capital amount of money that's going to get spent at this point in time, we're not asking for any change to that. Right. That's not right. your point. That's though, not right? my point. Yeah, yeah it's I get it. properties that are in that are creating a lot of uncertainty. Other people who receive tax dollars, right? But there's nothing. I mean, I I'm thinking there's probably nothing you can do about that, other than take them out of the urban renewal district. And that, I don't think there's any new companies going to be built in the next year or two that will then go into the enterprise zone for two or three years. So we won't even see it several years so i i think in my mind this will be paid off before 
any new big new building comes in that is causing more of a problem. I mean, like no matter what, it's a roll of the dice, but there's we have an opportunity. We, we're going to have to like do it regardless. Mm -hmm. It's how bad we're going to have debt problems or associate. And as someone who was around for both the ambulance fund and the mm -hmm. uh, some of the budgeting around the urban renewal, this is literally the projects that we were talking about for urban renewal. Mm -hmm. Like fundamentally it was water and then sidewalks. Those were the two things that we talked about at great length when we uh, discussed urban renewal and uh, ARP funding. I just remember one thing I was going to say in the program, it does show sidewalks working up towards the middle school mm -hmm. and we're bringing this in. I do notice there are sidewalks that aren't there up Keith road. I would just make it, put it into our program to look at that a little bit more as we go. I don't know if our sidewalk program versus urban renewal, but you're pulling this in and there's sidewalks that go almost up Keys road, but they don't go all the way down. So just, I just want to put that on our radar as there's a sizable amount of transportation projects identified in the plan. Mm -hmm. we're, we're all aware of that. But well, we know it's, now it's we're more it's more a prioritization of that list of CIPs and when you work your way through them. That's and right. now all the money we we have now and for the next couple of years is put on this one project. I just want to make sure that Kim's point is being understood by all um, because the conversation is that we want to adjust the URA in, in approximately what two years? Is that what our conversation was? Potentially. Otherwise, we're going to continue to be creating problems for other people who are getting taxes as these new properties get developed and come on board. Um, so, you know, I think there's there's two questions we have here. It's how do we fund this project, which needs to be funded, but how do we eventually address what could be a design flaw? in this program. And so if we if we make this decision and lock ourselves in for you know another two, three years, we are not able to address and that's basically well, we are twenty one percent because we're not going to be able to get out of it until the twenty one percent is reached. I, I, yeah, I'm not sure how we get out of it. Other than taking cascade tissues out of the urban renewal, that's the only fix because any other business you're talking nothing's going to cause us more this until they build. All the buildings that are in there now are existing mm -hmm. and so they're capped and they don't lead to it because their assessed value is a lot different so the design flaws could hurt us in four five six years but not in the next two to three years is my i just want to make sure that the point is being understood that we do not know when we will reach the 21 percent so on one hand we're saying that we only want to do this for two more years without revising it but we don't know when the 21% will be actually be raised. So it may actually be three, four or five years. In the meantime, we're impacting districts like this, the fire districts. So I, I'm not, I just want to make sure that everybody understands what exactly she's bringing up here. Conscious choice. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Reasonable. But I'd also say that if we keep adjusting things, it's just going to keep doing it better. <laughs> because if you pull things out, it slows down the time that you're actually going to get the capital into the urban renewal area. So either way, it's going to have the same problems year over year, no matter what, unless we get rid of an urban renewal area, which I don't think we want to do. Real quick, Dave, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, with some of the projects that have happened around Moore Road, which were part of the urban renewal plan, that sort of alleviates some of the <coughs> maximum indebtedness, right? Because there was grant dollars that were used for that as opposed to urban renewal dollars. So that would help with some of the stuff you're talking about. I mean, as a student of, of urban renewal and everything, that, that should kind of help alleviate some of what you're talking about. Is that correct or incorrect? I wouldn't say that's entirely correct. Okay. So, so when you read through the list that's in there, it was based on dollars at the time and, and that 37 was established. That's that's a variable. That's, that's probably something that's gonna evolve. I mean, the 37 will lock. But that projects will probably evolve over time. That's what we're faced with right now. Yeah. But I, we're saying the same thing, I think just a little differently. Like there was grant dollars not from urban renewal used for more road, which technically doesn't take away from that 37 million. So in the long run, what they're looking about by adding another project isn't really going to cause any problems for the whole <laughs> district plan. That's what I'm saying. Right. And that's what we're saying is by doing this is not causing problems. <laughs> There's no negative impact here. I'm helping you. Right? Okay. I, I'm just, yeah, there's. Can we pause just for a second? Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we extend this meeting past 9 p.m. Council President Miller to extend past 9 p.m. Any seconds? 
Second. And ba Councilor Bailey, any discussion? All those in favor, state by saying aye. 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 Sorry. Opposed? Did it put this cap on it? Um, I do. I mean, I, I hear Kim and I do think, but I think if you're looking at, we have 1.3 million in the account roughly now. We know even with Cascade Tissues changing, we're going to get at least 400,000 in the November cycle, most likely. And then another 400,000 the next year, most likely. And that's paid off. That pays it off. I have a, I have a technical question about URA. Maybe hopefully Larry knows. Um, if we do get into a situation where we want to modify the URA within the two years, like we're tentatively kind of thrown around here, and we haven't reached the 21%, is there a way for us to use other funding mechanisms to compensate for that so that we can follow through on what we're talking about here? Or are we literally locked into having to use 21% from URA and whether it takes two years or six years, so be it? You're going to have to pay off the debt if we, if we had to borrow that. If you come up with another way to do that instead of this, then you could modify this, I suppose, and do that. So I, I guess the answer would be yes, you probably could. Uh, I don't know. I don't. Yeah. I just can't imagine why you would, but I guess you could. Well, I, I'm just afraid about the of the uh, enterprise zone and. Yeah, but the four hundred thousand by by the you before you were discussing uh, taking part of uh, a loaning amount of assessed value that you have in the district. By taking either cascade tissue out or lowering them out of it. Okay, that has already happened because of what the state has done now with the equipment. And so let's what I'm getting at, there may not be, we don't know what there's going to be next year. Does that take care of compression? Evidently it, they added it on and it did. So what's going to happen? I mean, I I don't know, and I, and very honestly, I don't think that the county knows, not not putting them down, it just it's going to be that confusing until they get in the tax uh, information and we do the calculations. I don't know what next fiscal year is going to look like, except that we would expect to get in the minimum 400,000 uh, for next year. Yeah, I mean, I, um, we need to move on the reservoir, I would believe, and we need to fund it. And if, if it, I don't see how it's going to take six years, but if it's takes more than two and something happens, then we revisit it and we, oh, we need to raise 500,000 because urban renewal is not there. And then we'll talk or something. But um, at this point, I think, you know, budgeting 2.1 million from the urban renewal is um, kind of what the vote would, I would look at. Now I have a motion. Motion, Councilor Jacobs. That Council makes a minor amendment to the Scapoose Urban Renewal Plan with resolution URA 1 2024 by adding the Keys Treatment Plan into the Urban Renewal District boundary, allowing eligible projects to be funded with the URP funds and pay an estimate $2,100,000 towards the new 3.0 MG reservoir. A motion. Jacobs. Second. Second by Councilor Bailey to use the urban renewal, make a minor amendment to Scapu's urban renewal plan with resolution URA 1-2 2024 by adding the Keys treatment plant property in the urban renewal district boundary, allowing eligible projects to be funded with the URP funds and pay an estimate 2.1 million towards the new 3.0 mega million gallon reservoir. Only question I would have or is is can you cap it and say pay a a 2.1 million I say an estimated that go up but I like that because it could go the other way too so it will go more than 21 percent so that's what it's based on I mean can we 21 you say capped at 2.1 million um and then if it's above that if it costs more than that you'll have to find funds or we just basically saying 21% of the project. You could put it, you could put the term maximum in there. Because if the project, all of a sudden there's another million on it, now we're doing 21% of the project. So you're going to have to increase it. 
the amount from the URA? The 21% is what we're asking. 2.1 is just a reference for engineer's estimate right now. If, if you want to cap it, imagine you have that luxury. Um, just know every dollar that we don't raise in some other manner, we will have to borrow, which will impact rates. So how you want to fund that, that's, that's up to you all, but it'll just be debt. Yeah, I, I'm, I guess I'm okay with it in the fact that we can, if it does take longer than what we're talking about and does impact the taxing districts, the special districts um, beyond what we're comfortable with going forward, then we can find another way of paying it off, whether that be raising the rates or um, any, any other alternative funding that may be out there. Discussion. That this is probably why you do this with two resolutions so you can pass getting one in <laughs> and getting the other funded in separate separate effort. All those in favor, state by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Um, okay, I appreciate you coming tonight. Um, I do say I personally want to learn more about this and I and I and I'll find out when that tax bill comes. But after you're gone, I'd like to have a meeting and kind of learn more and really look at the specifics and um, see so that we know going ahead what to expect. So, and the goal is after July basically is to come back and have a more in-depth conversation about the actual URA and the compression and all those great things, correct? Maybe after the tax. That's I want to find out what gets compressed. Oh. Not everything does. Some do. Um, Larry, as part of your transition document, will you please add that to the list when you hand over to the new city manager? Yes, I will. Because I, this not, I don't know if necessarily a flaw, but this might be what's built in. A new business comes in and builds, and it's it's going to bring a lot of tax dollars in. It is going to affect because of all the levies and other things that we have and the cap. But that. Maybe we have to live with it, but we can find a way to use that money to make good or so use it. I um, mean, you can't pull everything out of the urban renewal, but maybe you can build things that help and use it. It's a, you're, you're, you're going to say, oh, I don't want a million dollars of tax this year because of a compression. Well, maybe we can use it. Help. All right. Meeting adjourned.